socio-economic rights and accountability project, Sarab, has urged President Muhammad Buhari to use his leadership position to urgently withdraw the names of nominees recently submitted to the Senate for confirmation as resident electoral commissioners of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Now, these are alleged members of the All Progressive Congress. According to reports, the president had, on the 26th of July, sent the Senate the names of 19 resident electoral commissioners for confirmation. At least four of these 19 nominees were allegedly either members of the political, his political party or have been previously indicted for corruption. Now, in a letter dated 3rd September 2022 and signed by Serap's Deputy Director, Kalawa Lulua Dari, the organization said the combined effect of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended, the Electoral Act and international standards, as, uh, which is requirement that elections must be organized by a truly independent and impartial electoral body. Well, joining us to discuss this is Luadari Kolawale. He's a deputy director, Serap, and Tunji Abdulhamid. He's a legal practitioner. Tunji, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yes, uh, Kolawale will be joining us in a few moments. Tunji, uh, th this seems like a deja vu to me. Like we've had this conversation before. I think at the time it was um, Onochi that was the subject of the conversation, and here we are again with Serap making these similar allegations. Um, again, because these are allegations, are there anything really to go by? Yeah, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's an allegation, but I think it has an element of uh, truth in, in it because they were able to put on certain issues there. In other words, some of the nominees, they were, they were able to ascertain that they were former members, they are members of APC. Some of them were related to APC, uh, uh, the deputy uh, chairman or whatever. Some of them are, are closer to the, to the people in government. In that way, they, they, they can't be uh, independent in a way. Because when you are, as, as an electoral body, you must be seen to be not uh, uh, attached to anybody. So if you have sympathy for a party, if you have interest in a party, if you are a card carry member of a party, you are not supposed to, you are not qualified in that regard. Because the law says you must be an impartial um, uh, person and you must be a person of integrity. So if you are uh, of, of unquestionable character, so if you are, if you have, if you are polit a political, in other words, if you are associated with any member of the party, or you are, you are, you have sympathy for those parties, or you have been having issues with them, you have been romancing with them. If one of them was alleged to have been a governmental candidate of the party 2015, hmm. so there is no way you can have independent in that regard because you must have an interest in this in it. So and for you, for for us to have trust in INEC. We must have people that are not that don't have an alliance with any of the party in attention. Why do you think that this same similar issue keeps cropping up under the Buhari administration, especially for an, an administration that has zero tolerance for corruption and has promised us? Don't forget, Mr. President, a few days ago promised that he was not going to interfere with the elections. He was not going to have uh, you know, a, um, a hand in whatever happens within his party, within the elections in general. But here we are having to discuss this almost similar situation to that of um, Ms. Onoche um, some time ago. It is unfortunate that it's coming from the president that seems to be honest, uh, to, be, to have integrity or transparent integrity. Because I remember even that of the uh, Lord it was, it was it was until it was forced. That's when they would do the the nomination, or because it was done twice or thrice, I can't remember. It was sent earlier, it was rejected, it was sent again. So I, I think uh, the president is not uh, living up to his uh, words. In other words, when you claim to be or an integrity, a person of integrity, you must do in that regard, you must behave in that regard. Appointing people who have connection with the party, who have a uh, sympathy for the party, who are members of the party, who have been aspirants under the party, there is no way they will be independent. And I don't know why the president is, uh, is also repeating the same thing. Probably the president is not aware that they maybe, you know, he may not know that. He may not be aware because it's not like that's our present statement. I'm not aware of the presidency. The president is not aware of it. He may not be aware of it. But now that we are telling him, I think he's doing the right thing by withdrawing the nation. It's there, unfortunate that it's coming from the president. There are those who have been pushing and campaigning for the return of certain known individuals who, when I say known, um, former Rex, who they people think that are reliable, 
who have stood their grounds, who have been unbiased over time. Uh, one of those is, of course, Mikey Gini, who uh, was the resident electoral commissioner in Akwaibom State, and we saw how he was dragged by the APC in Akwaibom State, uh, even when he stood his grounds and called what happened in, within the party illegal. Um, many are saying that people like that should have been returned if we must have free, fair, and credible elections, but that is not the case because I do not necessarily see his name uh, on that list. Yeah, of, of course, you can see the stand in Akwaibom State. Based on that, you know, it's, it's, they seem as anti, anti APC. And in that regard, they will not, they will, they will not do their bidding. And definitely, they are not, they are not, they are not going to retain it. You see, we are just, we just uh, mount uh, integrity and we mount uh, loyalty and uh, uh, transparent honesty without uh, following it. That is what we are seeing here. So if you want to, it, those kind of people are the people that should be in INEC, who would stay independent, who will not allow anybody to influence them. Whether you are coming in power or you are not in coming in power, or you are, you are closer to them or not, you would stand your ground on, on what is right. That is, those are the kind of people that, 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 that the electoral has and the, the constituents say to be a member of uh, INEC. But unfortunately, what we are having are people who are card carrying member of the party, people who have been uh, uh, aspirants under the party, people who have contested election under the party and want to be elected as an uh, INEC uh, member. Uh, member. To be un it's unfortunate that people of integrity are not being put there. And it's unfortunate that the president, who should be the one leading the anti corruption uh, war, is the one in, 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 uh, dominating them. That is that. So I, I think, I, I think it, 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 it drops on the corruption. Uh, fight of the of, of current president and well, the, the regime. We're being joined by the Deputy Director of Serap, Kola Oluwadari. Mr. Oluwadari, thank you so much for joining us. It's very, very applaudable that, you know, Serap always seeks out these discrepancies or alleged discrepancies or, uh, I, I'm, I'm choosing my words carefully here, or, or somewhat of, uh, uh, I don't know, dark spots to, you know, push out in the news because a lot of people might not have an idea who these people are until they emerge as INEC Rex. But Sarah always find, finds a way to come up with these issues and, of course, bring it to the fore and, note, uh, and, and get Nigerians to, you know, get on top of it and start discussing it. Uh, and, and, and I want to ask quickly, do we also play a role in how these things ch turn out at the end of the day? Because before you joined us, I was just talking about the situation in Akwaibom State with the, f the former rec, um, Mike Higini, um, and how he was being dragged by the APC when he called them out on certain um, illegalities that held in, you know, within the parties, um, during the party's primaries. So again, how do we find men and women who would be above board, who would be able to carry out their jobs without fear of favor, or any party alliances? Uh, thank you very much. I, I don't think it's very hard to find uh, men and women of unquestionable character in Nigeria. I do not believe that the integrity is that scarred in Nigeria. Uh, enough that the president cannot, uh, will not be able to act on that constitutional would of office to appoint them in this kind of sensitive position. And to answer your question directly, of course, Nigerian citizens. I play a very large role in this kind of conversation, which ultimately we hope that the aim is to provide that uh, very important critical mass to compel the president to act in the interest of the people and in, in accordance with the oath of office that is sworn to as president and constitutional uh, provision. So the people must bring enough pressure to bear on the president, knowing fully well that this is the democracy where the people hold power. And where, particularly, the democratic process that we're talking about in the three plays an important part in government. That is what will happen in the next four to eight years. Mm. So people should be bold enough to engage in discussions like this, which is very, very important for the constitution has given us the right, that freedom of expression, to be able not only to speak, but to impart and receive ideas. So people must be able to engage. And this also includes members of political parties that they're including members of the ruling political party, the APC. We should all understand this is about due process. This is about the law. This is about justice not only being done, but being seen to have been done. And that is why the provision of the electoral and the constitution has provided it is very clear thing, that these individuals must not only be people of integrity, but they must not be seen to be political. It's very important. It plays a very important role in the political process. So that whatever the outcome, of the election in 2023 can be 
people will see that it is free and fair. And so this is very important for anybody to understand. The, the elections must not only be free and fair. The people must see uh, the people. You know. um, it's one thing to say that we want people who are, um, well, people who are not necessarily associated with political parties, but then we know that every single human being is political, one way or the other. We will have alliances. It might not be out there. Um, for example, journalists don't necessarily align with anybody, but at the end of the day, they cast their votes for somebody. I, I, I'm trying to go somewhere here. Now, our other guests made a case that maybe the president isn't aware uh, of some of these things that are happening. Maybe the president doesn't even know that these people have one po at, at one point or the other had cases of corruption or indictments or, or are even somewhat you know, affiliated to his political party. For him, he sees upright and upstanding men. So can we really put that blame on Mr. President or should we be blaming other people who work in the presidency? Of course, the book stopped at the table. And if let's assume that the president is ignorant of this issue, including the provisions of the law, why does he have an African general perspective? And this is why we're having this kind of political conversation, which I believe ultimately will get into the ears of the president, either directly or for those who work for him in the So while the president may claim ignorance before now, which I doubt, at least after these conversations and demands by the people, I doubt if you're able to claim the same ignorance. And this is not the first time this issue is coming up that I've been pointed out earlier. So why do we see this recurring, if you call it mistakes? Well, I doubt they are mistakes, which is why we need to compel the president to act on the public interest. Which is why, again, the drafters of the constitution that subjected this appointment to confirmation by the president. So it's a two-pronged affair. The president has nominated. Let us assume, as you have or, uh, suggested, that he is the not. The Senate cannot be not. And that is why our call is on the president to withdraw those things. Because if those things were not submitted in the president, then there is need to uh, there is need to for the Senate to do. So whether it is the president, and our letter is copied to both the Senate and the House of Breath right here. If the president is not aware, the Senate should do the thing to ensure that these individuals who have been alleged, it might be an allegation at this point, but the Senate should do its job. And the president also has officers who can act on the job and listen to, to do their findings and investigation to confirm whether what Nigerians were saying about some of these individuals are true or not, and then to withdraw them. Hmm. So I really don't think that is a way that we can remove responsibility from the president. This thing. Particularly, it is completely their name that for confirm. So okay. Very Finally, Tunji, because we're out of time. Um, do you see us ever scaling beyond this level? Because it seems, like I said earlier when we started this conversation, it seems like a reoccurrence. I felt like it was a deja vu because we have had this conversation before in the Onoche situation. Um, will it take another administration for us to go beyond this? Because Kolawale is saying that, oh, if the president doesn't do it, the Senate can do it. But then the Senate is filled with members, majority of members from the APC again. Who will they prioritize? Will they prioritize the Nigerian state? Uh, or will they be prioritizing the party and the ability to win the elections at the end of the day? Tunji? And I, I want to commend the Senate for their courage for raising the issue and for going to court in this regard. They've been doing that. I want to see. So with, the, with pressure from CSO and the Senate uh, going to court, I think the, the members of the National Senate will also be wary and they, they want to see that, look, writings are done. I won't see, I, 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 I think they will do the writing. They will not accept that commission. Because if they do, that will, that will, that will you know, in as, even if the election is free and fair, people will still, will still believe that it was not free and fair because, because people who organize elections seem to be members of a particular party. So I, I, I think uh, it will not go beyond this business. And uh, the writing for the, for the Senate is to reject the nomination or the president withdrawing the nomination and send another names. Though it's difficult in Nigeria to say that, look, anybody that will be appointed is not one way or the other, directly or indirectly, connected with any of the parties in, 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 in place. But when it's glaring, you don't just do it that way. You say, look, these are, these are, these are you see, this is very glaring because we are told somebody contested an election at APC. Somebody was sent away, away from the, for, for corrupt practice in his business. So the, you can get people who are not even known to people. 
who are not even part of it. It may be related to indirectly or indirectly, because there's no way in this country you see people who are not by one reason or another directly or indirectly related okay. to those in, in, in government or a particular party. And I think uh, the right thing for state to do is to reject the nomination or the president from okay. the nomination. Well, we have to go, unfortunately, that tab time. Kola Walelu Adare is the Deputy Director, Serap, and Tunji Abdulhamid is a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you. All right. Well, glad to have you all on the program today, and I hope that you all enjoy this conversation. Tomorrow we'll be back at 7 p.m. with politics, of course, and talking for development. But before I go, I will give you my take. Here's my take. Now, a good name, they say, is more valuable than any amount of silver or gold. This is a lesson in morality and the value of a reputation that many mothers impart on their children at a young age. Now, it is meant to create boundaries for our behavior by introducing us to, you know, the concept of shame. But when it comes to our leaders, the value of a reputation and an aversion to being shamed seems to be like a lesson they skipped over, you know. But what does it say of our leaders when integrity and impartiality never seem to rank high in their decision making? regarding nominations to fill job positions that actually require these traits. A good rule of the thumb in public service is to always avoid even the appearance of impropriety. Of course, I mean, that only matters when people you know, who value their reputation are capable of feeling shame. For those governors and future presidents promising transparency, it's time to put integrity at the forefront of our choices for government nominations. And that's my take. I'm Mary Anacone. Have a good evening.